Welcome to our lecture online. Let's talk about quasars. So this new set of videos is about quasars. Well, the reason why quasars are so interesting, not just because of what they really are, but because how they were discovered and all the trouble they had to go to to really figure things out. And what's really interesting was that making some initial presumptions which were incorrect, and that's also where the name came from, caused them to take years longer to figure out what they were dealing with. And the name here is quasars. Quasars stand for quasi-stellar radio objects. In other words, they discovered some radio radiation. They weren't quite sure where it was coming from. When they finally began to correlate what they were seeing with the, the radio radiation, with the visual uh, the visual spectrum that they saw because after all what they needed to do was tell the, their, their uh, colleagues on top of the mountain with their optical telescopes to train it to the same direction to see if they could see something visually what they were discovering via radio radiation and when they finally began to line things up it looked like it was a star-like object and so therefore since they didn't know what it was they called it a quasar a quasi-stellar-like object when they didn't know what it was. But what is it actually? Well, it turns out that it's a very luminous object initially discovered by the emissions of very powerful radio radiation and that's emitted by some of them, not all of them, but some of them. And then they were originating from the center of distant galaxies. Now, they didn't figure that out right away, but these are objects that are emitting an enormous amount of energy, a far away galaxies from the center of the galaxy displaying an, an enormous large redshift. And of course, large, large redshifts means that it must be really far away, according to Hubble's law. And it was associated with the appearance of a star-like object, as I just mentioned, in the visual spectrum. And that's why they weren't sure what they were looking at. They first thought they were looking at some sort of star. But of course, stars, especially blue stars, because they had a bluish tint to them, well, they don't emit radio radiation, so it's kind of a really big mystery. So that's where the name came from, but essentially it's some small object at the center of a galaxy far, far away that's putting out very powerful emissions also at times in the radio, uh, radio radiation air, uh, range. And so that's why, well, since they didn't know what it was, they called them quasars. Now galaxies, the ones that are really far away that have those quasars within them, well those are known as active galaxies. And the nucleus, where the radiation is coming from, the center of these galaxies are known as active galaxies, nu galaxy nuclei. And the engine, essentially what's driving these quasars, is supermassive black holes, enormous black holes at the center of those galaxies that are currently active. So they're swallowing up material, and it's that action of swallowing up enormous amount of material, of course, in far away galaxies, that produces the energy that we then that we then discovered first as radio radiation and later on as a very luminous source of radiation across all the, the spectrum of the ENM bands. So now we kind of know what quasars are. Let's take a look at the next videos to get a feel for this, how they were discovered and for a feel of what really, really um, kind of generates all that energy and why there's so much of it that we discover from very large distances away. Are they inside a black hole? Yeah, they're actually inside the black, well, actually, the black hole is what powers it. It's the debris falling into the black hole that generates the energy that we see. So you actually see it? We actually measure the radiation. We can see the radiation, we can see the, the, radi the, the radio radiation from the lobes, and we can see the luminous radiation from the debris falling in. It creates an enormous amount of energy. Well, once it's a black hole, it's history. You don't see anything, but it's on the way of falling into a black hole. So it's still outside the event horizon. It's the huge accretion disk that's slowly swirling into a black hole, that the radiation coming from that action that we see. It's very interesting.